Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. Let's go ahead and finish up with the interface preferences. I'm going to hit Control, comma, or Command, comma on a Mac. Go to my Interface tab. And basically the Interface tab is going to give you a bunch of options as far as configuring kind of the way that the Lightroom interface looks as well as how it performs. Now let's get started with the panels. Uh, we can customize our panel end marks as well as our font size. So the font size over here that you see in the quick develop keywording, all these fonts we can change the size. Now I prefer to have it uh, set to small just because it does take up more space when it's set to large. Um, and right now it's just defaulted to small. With the end marks, those are these little flourishes that are at the end of each panel. So we can actually change those to anything we want. We can upload our own or we can choose one of the other options that it has. So uh, we'll just go ahead and choose this atom. Uh, end mark and then let's go on. Now lights out gives us a couple options. Now what lights out is is if we uh, hit OK and we get back into here and we go into what well, we can just do it right from here. I'm gonna hit E to go to my loop view and we'll talk about this more later. I'm gonna hit L to go into dim mode. So if I hit L once it takes me to dimmed out. So we can still see some of the panels but it's about 80 percent dim right now and you can set that option which we'll show you guys in a second. If I hit L again we go to completely lights out. Now this is great for when you want to show clients, say, you know, some images without having to show them, you know, the messy interface or anything else to to look at. So it allows them just to focus strictly on an image. So let's hit control comma again or command comma and then uh, let's go to our lights out options. So we have options to set the screen color during lights out to a different color. So we can set it to black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray or white. Now you guys can use your own preference. I prefer black just because it eliminates everything on the screen and allows you just to focus on the image. And then you have a dim level uh, set default. So like I said, that first time you click L, it goes to dim. When you click that L, you can actually set it to go to a different percentage of dimness, if that's a word. Um, so I just leave that at default as well, but you guys can customize it if you like. All right, so moving on to the background options, we have different options to set this background color in our main window area. Now this would be our main window. Our secondary window would be if we were running dual monitors, we would have another work area window that we can customize as well. Again, I typically leave this to medium gray or if you like dark gray. Um, I think anything else is kind of rather distracting. I don't like it set to black because again, it draws my attention away from the image just because it kind of matches the identity plate. So usually I leave it on medium gray or dark gray, but feel free to set that however you like. You can also set textures to it. Um, and it allows you, it has one preloaded, this pinstripes. And I have no idea why you'd ever do this because it's really distracting to me and I can like see it refreshing on my screen. But um, I just leave that as none, but feel free. If you guys like to customize your fill color and your texture, go for it. So I'm gonna switch mine actually back to just medium gray. Next thing we got is the keyword entry. Uh, it says separate keywords using commas. Now what this basically means is that when you type in keywords, you can type in multiple keywords at a time and just separate it by a comma. Um, you can actually use spaces or commas. I don't like to use spaces as far as a separator for keywords because a lot of my keywords will have spaces. Like if I type in bridal prep, I'll put a space between bridal and prep uh, versus, a, and then when I want to separate a keyword, I'll use a comma. So if you use spaces to separate keywords, you need to make sure that your keywords don't use spaces. Otherwise, you'll be creating multiple keywords with each one. All right, so I'm just going to leave that on commas. And then uh, I'm going to have this autocomplete text and keyword tags field selected because what that's going to do is as I start typing in a keyword, it's going to autocomplete it based on what's in my catalog and what I'm frequently using. So it's a nice handy feature to have turned on. Moving on to the film strip, I like to have all of my options available. So these are different options that we can see in our, our, our in our film strip down here at the very bottom. One is show ratings and picks. I like to be able to see my ratings while I'm looking at the film strip. Uh, show badges. I want to be able to see the badges. I want to be able to see the stack counts. Um, this option right here is to show photos in Navigator on mouse over, which means that basically when you mouse over an image, I'll show you guys right now, it's going to show that image up in our Navigator on our top left. Now, if the navigator is the exact same size as your film strip image, which it's really close right now, then that might not be that helpful. But let's say you like to run the navigator a little bit larger. Well, having that preview gives you a little bit better of an idea of, of what that image is. 
I'm going to hit control comma to get back in. Let's go to the next one. Show photo info tooltips. That just means that when you mouse over something, it's going to show you a little tooltip that's going to pop up next to the mouse uh, icon, which gives you information on whatever you're kind of pointing at. So it's a useful feature to have turned on. It'll give you information on an image when you're over an image or over a setting or over anything. So let's hit control comma again. You guys should know that command comma control comma shortcut really well by the end of this tutorial. All right. Last thing, we have some tweaks. Now, I like to turn on my zoom clicked point to center. And basically what that is, is when I zoom into an image, when I click on that, it's going to make the area that I click the center point for the zoom. If I don't have that selected, then what it's going to do is just automatically center to the, the middle of the image. It's going to zoom to the center of the image versus to my click point. So I like to have that selected just so I can quickly get in on any area that I want so I can edit. Jumping back in with control comma, we can uh, we do want to enable OpenGL for video. Um, basically, if you guys are shooting video, Lightroom now offers the ability to not do too much editing with video. Basically, you can edit the in and out points. You can preview it inside of Lightroom, and it is helpful to enable OpenGL so that it runs a little bit smoother. It, and that's if your graphic card supports it. So if you don't have a graphic card that supports it, it's not going to matter anyway. So just have it enabled. Next thing we have use system preferences for font smoothing. This really isn't a big deal. Uh, I know Mac versus Windows has different kind of uh, preferences they have different settings for uh, font smoothing so if you want to use the system preferences over Lightrooms that's fine I have this set to just default which is unselected because the fonts look just fine to me so alright guys we're done with our preferences let's move on to the next tutorial